consent agenda and considered in its normal sequence on the agenda. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda, which includes item 6A, items 8A through E, items 12A and B, and tonight's bills totaling $7,089,567.41. So moved. Thank Second. you, Tom. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Consent agenda is approved with all ayes. Moving on to item 7 on the agenda. The purpose of the ongoing community development block grant project construction, the CDBG. The purpose of this public hearing is to allow for public comments on the CDBG block grant construction project. Now is the time for the public to comment. Thank you, Council. Obviously, I'm not public, but um, so it is a requirement of our CDBG grant that when we're approximately halfway completed with construction of the project, that we need to hold a public hearing and inform the community on the status of the project, where we're at, um, what's been completed, and uh, what we see upcoming, uh, taking us to the conclusion of the grant. So that is uh, my purpose here this evening. I will try to keep it brief. Um, as well as answer any questions that you have um, once I'm done. Again, if there's any people in the community that have questions as well, they can ask. Um, I supplied some information to you before uh, council meeting started this evening. Um, one is the required public hearing information that I will go over, as well as an activity log and an upcoming schedule for the next three weeks from our contractor. Uh, that three-week schedule takes us to the end of the project, the end of the construction phase of the project. Um, I will go ahead and begin with uh, the required information here. Uh, feel free to stop me along the way if you guys do have questions. Um, so the project is facade improvements that result in the historic renovation of approximately 23 buildings in the downtown. A component of this is a stormwater project, so the bioretention cell that's being constructed. There has been one extension on this project that takes us the, the grant through the end of November, November 30th, 2016. Where's the project at? The facade contractor started mobilizing on August 18th and they began work on August 22nd. The mason, the Mason sub for Woodruff Construction. Woodruff Construction is the prime on this project. The Mason has been the one on site the most. Um, and they will be working hard to finish by the end of October. The underground electric work started a little bit behind schedule. Um, there was a few delays along the way with weather and unexpected <laughs> hitches. Uh, but the underground electric work and utility work is substantially complete. As you can see, when you walk down there, all the overhead poles, um, for the most part, are all, all gone. It feels a little bare when you're down there. Um, so with those delays, we were pushed back two weeks with our fa uh, facade contractor starting. Uh, Woodruff still believes that they'll be able to finish construction by the end of October. Uh, we meet with our contractor every Thursday, met with them today, and they're still on track to be done by the end of October. So we'll go through a quick update on each property where we're at. So 100 East 2nd Street, the masonry is in progress. <coughs> um, painting and siding still to be completed. On 102 East 2nd, masonry is completed. Um, still waiting for paint to be completed. 104 East 2nd, windows are in order and will be installed the last week of October. 106, 108 East 2nd, uh, let's see. The masonry and the stair cover is in progress. The chimney is being rebuilt starting next week and then the painting of the fire escape thereafter. 110 East 2nd and 112 East 2nd are complete. 104 East 2nd Street, the masonry is complete and we're still waiting for the painting to be completed. Uh, same thing on 116 East 2nd. 120 and 122 East 2nd Street are complete. 124 East 2nd Street, the masonry is complete. 
but the painting uh, still needs to be completed. 128, masonry is complete. Painting of the rear, uh, painting, rear stairs, and the basement stair cover is still to be completed. 130 East 2nd is complete. 200 East 2nd Street, tuck pointing is over half complete. This is the, the largest building and largest part of the project. Um, there's still much work to be done. The property owner is contributing an extra $28,000 to get additional work completed on his building. Um, so it was a great way to leverage our grant dollars to get more work out of the project. <coughs> 104 East 2nd, uh, work has not started yet. It's a very uh, minimal item. Uh, 206 East 2nd, all work is in progress. 208, uh, this building was removed from the project. 110 East 2nd, all work in progress. Same thing with 112 East 2nd. 114 East 2nd, the windows have been ordered um, and will be installed the week of the 17th. Masonry and painting thereafter. 216 East 2nd, um, the tuck pointing is done and the painting will start next week. Um, Triple B began working on the stormwater bioretention cell September 6th. They have completed that. Plants are ordered. They're going to be picked up tomorrow and planting of those plants will start next week. Where's the money coming from? Um, a grant amount of $500,000 is coming from the Community Development Block Grant, CDBG, um, through the Iowa Economic Development Authority. This project is benefiting the low and moderate income, and the city of Muscatine has a residential anti-displacement -displa relocation act in place for those residents who may be, or may have been relocated due to the project. No residents have been relocated uh, due to this project. Um, there is uh, $270,272 left in the community development block grant to be spent. Obviously, that's just where we're at from previous. Uh, we'll have a change order next week for over $100,000 of additional work that's been completed. So that is where we are currently at on our CDBG project. I'd uh, be happy to answer any questions at council or anybody else may have. So it appears there's one building maybe in the middle of the project that got removed. How does that work? Yep. Um, so from when construction starts to when construction finishes, the property owners are not able to work on their buildings without it going through our contractor. Um, if there is a contractor that works on it, it has to follow the federal regulations for Davis-Bacon, prevailing wages, um, and, and those items. There is an exception to that. You'll see some work going on down there. If it is a, an emergency situation, as determined by the city and with some input from the state, then an outside <coughs> contractor can come in and work on those in emergency uh, situations. It happened at 106, 108. Um, the chimney was unsafe. Uh, was removed and the property owner's contractor is rebuilding the chimney. I'm looking at 2082nd. It said building work removed from the project. And it, does that mean that they have their own contractor that's going to do something outside the, the general? That what that means is they did work to their building and because they did work to their building during the construction time frame, they are not able to receive improvements from the, the CDBG grant. Um, same property owner has other properties in the project. We're doing improvements to those buildings. Property owners indicated they will make the improvements to their building at their expense in the future. Right. How about the 204 East Second, where it says no work let? Y yes. Uh, that's, sorry, that should say yet. Um, the, the work on that is a downspout. Um, they're angling a downspout to the other side. They're disconnecting it from the stormwater, the sanitary sewer um, that goes into Papoose. So it's actually going to outfall onto the alley. So there's just a minor um, gutter and gutter work on that building. I assume then it will eventually be completed. Yes. By the end of the month. Yes. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> Any other questions? Yeah. <clears throat> Two questions. One, um, are we uh, doing before and after pictures? Yes, we are. Okay. And when you said uh, the gutters, 
Are they are we tying all that stuff into the storm sewers? They're not. So all the gutters, sorry, they're not being tied into the sewer. All the gutters in the alley do outfall onto the alley. The gutters that we are working on additionally outfall in the alley, especially in the 200 block. We really want those to outfall in the alley so that that water goes into the bioretention cell and is uh, managed through that system. Okay. Good. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. Thank you. Moving on the agenda to 11A. We have to close the public hearing. Oh, I'm sorry. We have to move to close the hearing? Yes. Okay. So moved. Second. 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 All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> Motion is approved with all ayes. <clears throat> now 11A. Presented for City Council's consideration is the second and final reading of an ordinance amending Title 10, Chapters 4 and 5 of the City Code, Floodplain Management Regulations. FEMA has issued a new flood insurance rate maps for the area protected by the island levy. These maps must be officially made part of the City of Muscatine's floodplain regulations in order for Muscatine residents and businesses to continue to purchase flood insurance through the National Flood Insurance Program. Is there a motion to adopt the ordinance on second and final reading as submitted and to direct for its publication as required by law? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, Councilman Spread, how do you vote? Aye. Harvey? Aye. Santos? Aye. <coughs> Fitzgerald? Aye. Ray Walt? Aye. The ordinance is adopted with all ayes. Moving on to 11B, presented for City Council's consideration, is a resolution awarding the contract at awarding the contract and approving the contract and bond for the 2016 sidewalk construction program. Five bids were received for the project with the low bid from Higher Construction Incorporated in the amount of $141,909.15. There is $100,000 budgeted for this project. Staff is requesting to proceed with the project and look for savings as the work progresses. Any amount over the budgeted $100,000 will be funded from road use taxes. Is there a motion to adopt the resolution as submitted? So moved, Your Honor. Second. Any discussion? I do have a couple questions. Uh, one of them, of course, you know, brings up uh, the lowest bid was 40% over the engineering estimate, so I was just wondering what may have happened. <clears throat> Jim Edgmond. <clears throat> Mayor, Council, uh, let me say this straight away. It, certainly that is not the goal when we do a cost estimate, uh, estimating what construction is, to miss it by that far. So my apologies for that. Uh, this is a relatively new program. This is only the second year we've done it. The cost estimate was based on costs from last year. Some of the things we did we thought would reduce the price, trying to get a little bit more value, and it appears it really had almost no effect. And some of that cost increase um, is due to the economy. I recently learned um, that, uh, uh, or was told that uh, cement prices have gone up significantly in uh, last year. And some of that additional cost was because uh, last year we picked the quote-unquote low-hanging fruit. It were, they were real easy uh, projects. In one case on Dawson Street, all the driveways were already in, and the sidewalk that goes through that driveway was already put in. And I don't think I gave that quite enough consideration for that that was a substantially easier project to do. And so maybe using the prices from last year wasn't the wisest thing in the world to do. But uh, we are using the bids we got this year to start the database to put all of that together. And hopefully the longer this program <clears throat> rolls along, the better we'll get at it. Did you have to cut back any uh, because of this? Um, the discussions that we've had are, and this is a unit 
priced contract. And there is uh, all but one of the areas of sidewalk that we're going to put in are around oof, Madison School. And certainly we want to shoot to do all of those. And once we get through that, if we have realized some of the cost savings that we think maybe will be in there on, on the quantities, um, we'll go ahead and do that last one. And if they aren't, then we won't do that last piece because that last piece is certainly uh, not as critical. And we would just take that and roll that into next year's program. So I think we... Where is that last piece? It's in Weed Park. So over towards the uh, dam that's on the lake that's in Weed Park. Okay. Are these four or five foot wide? Five foot wide. Five foot four wide. inches thick. Okay. Rebar? On a granular base. Rebar or no. fiber? No steel, no fiber. Just pure Just concrete, 3,000 pounds or...? The mix that they will use will probably be closer to 4,000 pounds at breaking strength. But it is uh, very common to do it that way. I mean, most of the sidewalks in town are done will exactly do that way. Any compacting of the base? Yes, of okay, course. Good. So if, if we agree to do this, and, and it says here we, we could take the overage from the road use tax fund, what goes undone? Nothing goes undone. We have a, a surplus. We're going to talk a little bit about road use, uh, uh, but um, we have a uh, surplus in road use tax funds. Uh, enough to cover this? Enough to cover the additional costs and hopefully the savings as well. Do you want to talk about it? <clears throat> when, when, we, when we bid this, just hypothetically, Jim, yes. you're looking at them using our base? Are they used, are we providing base from yes. like the airport or leftovers yes. from something that yes. that effect? The, the base that goes on here, we are providing it for them. All the contractors doing is placing it. All they're doing is maybe just getting the depths, doing the, the prepping, getting the forms put in, right. pouring the concrete, and then stripping the forms and backfilling. Yep. And stamping the sidewalk poetry in. Mm -hmm. um, it reminds, that does remind me that when we talked about that, and this is completely <laughs> unscripted, so please forgive me, no. but when you guys did talk about that, I think that they were going to bring it back up or at least evaluate it again. Uh, I don't think, talking to the low bidder, that that sidewalk poetry added pennies to this bid. I, I don't think there's a significant cost associated with it whatsoever. Um, but <clears throat> I wanted to at least get that in say, there. We didn't say like on all of it, right? I mean, we just we're just doing it on some of them, right? Yeah, uh, maybe two program. to three. Yeah, this uh, you guys said maybe do it as a trial basis, and yeah. we are evaluating whether we're going to continue to do stamps. There's some other things that maybe would be better and would allow that program to exist and not depend on just doing it in new sidewalk. Um, there's a process where you can do a template cutout and stick that to the sidewalk and sandblast it and stain it. And then there's no depression for the water to sit in to cause damage, um, et cetera, et cetera. And it would work and you could do it anywhere you wanted to. Okay. Instead of having to be restricted to where a new sidewalk would go in. And if you didn't like the poem or you wanted to eliminate, you could just sandblast the surface and get rid of it. Hopefully that isn't the case. Are the poems that are going to be stamped <laughs> on this one, are they the same poems, poems yeah. that we looked at? Yeah. Yes. yes. They're the yeah. Ones it's that already the ones that you've looked at the and The ones that you voted approved. on. The ones he didn't really care for. <laughs> I voted to do it. I didn't vote the, in favor of the poems. <clears throat> <laughs> same thing. You voted. <clears throat> Any other questions? No, thank you, Jim. I think Nancy thank has you, something Jim. she wants to say. At next week's in-depth meeting, we will go through all the funds and how they came out compared to budget. Um, and so that will include the road use tax fund. I don't have the numbers with me right <clears throat> now. It's actually in your books, but I, I don't have mine with me. Road use tax revenues did come in higher than what, what we'd estimated. And then, um, so the road <clears throat> use tax fund balance is actually much higher, but there were some carry forwards of equipment. Um, so taking that into consideration, there is sufficient money to, to if we do need to spend the 42000 over the estimate. 
but we'll go through it in more detail next week. Thank you, Nancy. Thanks, Nancy. Thank you. I have, a, I have another question, probably directed more to Greg and maybe former council members, but in the past history, I know the council's always had the issue of who pays for the sidewalk. And when they redid Hauser Street, I know that was an issue. And there was somewhat of that same issue when they did uh, Cedar Street. So as I recall, the past policy is the homeowner is responsible for the sidewalk. So how do we reconcile this that the city's putting in sidewalks? So originally the policy was or the city was willing to uh, take out the sidewalk and then be the homeowner's responsibility to, to put that sidewalk back in. Uh, two years ago, we received a grant from Wellmark uh, for $50,000 and the city budgeted $50,000 to do $100,000 worth of sidewalks. And then we did that again this, um, uh, this the following year as well. And uh, at the same time in the past, in 2015, the city council adopted a sidewalk uh, policy, uh, which I can uh, redistribute to, uh, to every, I'll just include it for everyone as well. Uh, but in there, it talked about the priorities for uh, replacing of sidewalks. Number one priority being uh, safe routes to school and connectors, uh, where we have gaps in sidewalks and making sure that uh, kids have a, uh, a safe route uh, via sidewalk to get to schools and we, that's where we start at the program and that's where the priorities and then the priorities go down from there but I'll send that full policy back out to the councils uh, for you to take a look at and uh, peruse. Okay. I was just concerned with the homeowners in the past who uh, I'll use the word were forced to put in their sidewalks uh, due to circumstances and not with the city's help so I was wondering are we there's there is still a maintenance requirement uh, within the policy as well. Uh, How about for new that's construction, big, though? For new construction, we have uh, safe routes to Sewell connectors. Andrew, I might need your assistance to run through the uh, off the top of my head here uh, the uh, the uh, the hierarchy of, of do you recall those off the top of your head? We need to pull the policy out. How does that May hierarchy? Not, but I, I will have to we'll send that out to you. But there is a hierarchy of, of replacements. Um, but we how do does that determine who pays for it? If it's a replacement of, of if existing it's a re sidewalk, the homeowner pays for it. The homeowner pays it, but we <coughs> will go out and but remove. the city will remove it. We will go out and remove the sidewalk at, uh, at our cost, but it is a homeowner's responsibility to replace. And we do have a. But these are mostly new sidewalks, aren't they? Right. These are new sidewalks. Not replacement. Not replacement. These are why is the, these are gaps why is the city and connectors. For it? Because we got a grant. Well, initially we had a grant, and then this past year we budgeted $100,000 for new sidewalks, uh, including these gaps or safe routes to safe routes to school connectors. That was identified as a as a policy or a priority uh, to get those gaps so that kids had a safe way to get to school, and that was going to be done at the at the city's expense. But I, as many homeowners. When they built their house, had to pay their themselves to put in a new sidewalk. So I'm just wondering. Mm -hmm. yeah. Typically, yeah. that's whether you should. <clears throat> Councils adopted a, yeah. a new policy, and and uh, that's the policy that we're following at this point. And some of them are put were put in by the developer, mm -hmm. right? As, as they yes, built. but I still paid for it well, based no, on yeah, the cost. Sure right. yeah. and, and I paid for mine too. And you're going to pay for the tax, a... taxes, but after they put a sidewalk and street in, your taxes are probably going to go up, so you're going to be paying that forever too. Can you I add, Jim? Enjoy. I just thought that I would add to it. Uh, Andrew coached me up on this, but uh, <laughs> there are some instances in the past where homes were built where there was no sidewalk put in front of it. And I am not aware of any instance where that exists, where the city has forced them to put a sidewalk in. The only policy is that if it needs to be replaced, if it's in bad shape, then they, they, they institute this policy of removing it and replacing it. So I think that is kind of directly related to what, what you're saying. There are different classes there. And if it, if it managed to get built without a sidewalk originally, and that's kind of what this is doing, is filling in some of those gaps. In, in addition, we have Cedar, Colorado, Mulberry, and the CSO project. All of those sidewalks are, are installed at the city's expense. True. Because we were doing a street. Yep. Correct. <coughs> Thank you, Jim. <clears throat> Does that answer your questions, Alan? I'll send out a copy I'll of the policy. Yes, I'll send out a copy of the happy, policy. But I'm not okay. happy with the answers. <laughs> okay. 
Is there any other discussion? No. <laughs> Hearing <Sorry>. none. Sorry. <laughs> Very Thank none. You. Councilman Saucedo, <laughs> how do you vote? Yes. Aye. Councilman Harvey? Aye. Councilman Spread? Aye. Councilman Fitzgerald? Aye. Councilman Raywalt? Aye. Resolution is adopted with all ayes. <laughs> 11C. Presented for City Council's consideration is a resolution approving the final plat for the County Park Subdivision. Muscatine County has filed a combined preliminary slash final plat for the Muscatine Point subdivision located at 3500 Harmony Court in Muscatine. The county has accepted a purchase offer from a local developer for the building and approximately 5.24 acres of land at this location. The proposed subdivision is necessary to facilitate this sale. The remaining real estate will be retained by the county and likely become a part of Discovery Park. Is there a motion to adopt the resolution as submitted? So moved, Your Honor. Second. Is there any discussion? Um, I was just kind of one. I, when I saw the saw the motion, I looked at the plat and I realized that I thought it was the county home, the tall structure. Is that? No, it's um, not that. It's it's not that, including that. But what are they going to do with that? If you would. Mayor, Council. My name is Eric Furness uh, on behalf of the Muskegon County Board of Supervisors. Um, we're currently, we've accepted the purchase offer for what's commonly referred to as the Optima building. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that single story facility there on Harmony Court. The three story former county home building, which is um, in the past, the, the recent past, housed the DHS offices. Um, that's scheduled. Um, we're going to be preparing RFPs to have that actually demolished, and the intent is to revert that space back to green space, which will be turned over to Discovery and County Conservation. Oh. So we attempted to sell that. There wasn't uh, much interest um, in that building at all, and it, uh, it's aging and requires a lot of uh, maintenance and upkeep, and it just the justification just wasn't there. Um, so that's kind well, of. I was just kind of surprised. I heard that today, then, and, and I and I was. You put geothermal in. You re, you had re, redid that part of it for DHS, and I was just kind of surprised that there wasn't a developer available to give it to, if nothing else. I, I think we were too. Um, however, I think the the regionalization of the mental health services has played a part in some of the space utilization. Uh, some of the county building, the community services building, has yeah. uh, adequate space now, and uh, seemed to uh, make sense to place DHS there. We're able to accommodate that there. Again, we did try to market that building. We're going to attempt to harvest um, some of the newer geothermal components for use elsewhere as much as we can from that uh, facility. But, uh, how new is that geothermal? How new? Yeah. I believe that's only, I'm going to say, three, four years. Yeah. We might be interested in some of that. Eight, well, is that like eight hundred thousand dollars or something like that? I, I don't have that exact figure on what the some of the components. components I'm just cost, thinking. But, yeah. so. Thank you. Yeah. Questions? No. Thank you, Eric. Thanks for coming tonight. <coughs> Any other discussion? Hearing none. Councilman Spread, how do you vote? Aye. Harvey. Aye. Sacedo. Aye. Fitzgerald. Aye. Ray Walt. Aye. Resolution is adopted with all ayes. Moving on to 11D on the agenda, presented for City Council's consideration <coughs> is a resolution setting a public hearing on a proposed development agreement with KRE LLC, including <coughs> annual appropriation tax increment payments in an amount not to exceed $155,000. On September 15th of this year, City Council set a public hearing for October 20th on several amendments to the Urban Renewal Plan. These amendments include a proposed development agreement with KRE LLC for the redevelopment of a commercial facility. Prior to any formal action by City Council, a public hearing is required. This hearing will take place on Thursday, October 20th, 2016 at 7 p.m. Is there a motion to adopt the resolution as submitted? So moved, Your Honor. Second. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, Councilman Fitzgerald, how do you vote? Aye. Saucedo? Aye. Harvey? 
Aye. Spread? Aye. Graywalt? Aye. The resolution <clears throat> is adopted with all ayes. 11E. Presented for City Council's re consideration is a resolution <clears throat> setting a public hearing on a proposed development agreement with Harrison Lofts, including annual appropriation tax increment payments in an amount not to exceed $675,000. On September 15, 2016, City Council set a public hearing for October 20th on several amendments to the Urban Renewal Plan. These amendments include a proposed development agreement with Harrison Lofts for the construction of an apartment complex which will provide for low and moderate income housing. Prior to any formal action by City Council, a public hearing is required. This hearing will take place on Thursday, October 20th at 7 p.m. Is there a motion to adopt the resolution as submitted? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Just one question. Um, on this one, it says that it's low to moderate income housing. Is that something that we're, we're governing as far as that goes? Or are they do they have a structured system that's keeping their housing tenants to be within income levels to be that? This program was, a, was the program that the City Council approved uh, the submission of a tax credit application to the state of Iowa that, and they were approved for their tax credit application. Along with that came a, uh, a TIF agreement up to $675,000 uh, towards the project at the intersection of Harrison and Bandag Drive uh, for the project. There's a minimum uh, in the agreement of 25%. I believe it's, it's a much higher percentage in, in actuality uh, uh, as part of the LMI program. And, and that's fine. I, I know that this was passed, I, I guess, prior yes. to yep. our, 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 or me being in here. Um, but what I'm asking is, it says it's going to provide low to moderate. Yes. There's a range. He wants to know, are we the ones that's we, vetting whether we, or not they're Are we low? governing that? Is, no. is, is our... That's through the state's tax credit program, and they'll be required, I believe it's over a 10-year, is it a 10-year period? Do you recall? I believe it's, it was a 10-year program. So they're not uh, going through the Section 8? They're not going through any types they of received programs to us? There are 12 or 13 Section 8 projects, vouchers, vouchers, vouchers allocated to this project. As part of that tax credit program, there was... Ah, that's, that's what, what he's saying. asking. Yes. So it could be Section 8 mm -hmm. and, and low income and up to where people are going to pay full amount. Correct. Market rate. Correct. There will be yes. market rate market units rate in, does, in, yeah. in the in so the in some, uh, in some aspect program as well. we will be benefiting in some yes. aspects, but you know it's we put that out, uh, the housing department put that out for, uh, for RF, RFP uh, at the time uh, for tax credits. We had two applications, one withdrew. This one proceeded and was rewarded the tax credits uh, along with the, uh, the, the vouchers and uh, tax increment financing. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other discussion? <clears throat> Hearing none, Councilman Spread, how do you vote? Aye. Harvey? Aye. Sacedo? Aye. Fitzgerald? Aye. Raywalt? Aye. Thank you. The resolution is adopted <clears throat> with all ayes. 11F. Presented for City Council's consideration is a resolution authorizing the assessment of unpaid abatement costs and unpaid rental inspection fees to private properties. Periodically, the City takes action to assess unpaid nuisance abatement costs and rental inspection <coughs> fees to private properties. The fee being requested for assessment at this time totals $14,820.46. Is there a motion to adopt the resolution as submitted? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, Councilman Fitzgerald, how do you vote? Aye. Councilman Saucedo? Aye. Harvey? Aye. Spread? Aye. Raywalt? Aye. Thank you. The resolution is adopted with all ayes. 11G. Presented for City Council's consideration is a resolution setting a public hearing on the lease of certain premises located at the municipal airport for fixed base operations. The proposed lease has been reviewed and approved by the current lease lessee, Carverero, and by the Airport Advisory Commission. Prior to any formal action by City Council, a public hearing is required. This hearing will take place on Thursday, October 20th at 7 p.m. Is there a motion to adopt the resolution as submitted? So moved. So moved. Give it to Michael. All right. <laughs> Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Councilman Spread, how do you vote? Aye. Harvey? Aye. Sacedo? Aye. Fitzgerald? Aye. Ray Walt? Aye. 
The resolution is adopted with all ayes. 11H. Presented for City Council's consideration is a resolution setting a public hearing for vacation of utility easements in the Riverbend 2nd edition. The property owner has submitted an easement vacation plat for a 10-foot wide utility easement composed of two adjoining 5-foot utility easements located on lots 16 and 17 at this property. The property owner plans to combine the two lots. Prior to any formal action by City Council, a public hearing is required. This hearing will take place Thursday, October 20th, 2016 at 7 p.m. Is there a motion to adopt the resolution as submitted? So moved, Your Honor. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, Councilman Fitzgerald, how do you vote? Aye. Sacedo? Aye. Harvey? Aye. Spread? Aye. Raywald? Aye. Thank you. The resolution <coughs> is adopted with all ayes. 11 I presented for City Council's consideration is a request to approve the proposal for supplemental soil borings for the Mississippi Drive corridor project. Proposals were received from two firms with the lowest proposal amount from Braun Intertech of Cedar Rapids in the amount of $14,270. The cost for the soil borings <coughs> will come from funds budgeted for the Mississippi Drive Corridor Project. Is there a motion to approve the request as submitted? So moved. Allen? Phil? Is there any discussion? Uh, please. Where are the borings going to be taken? Jim Edgemond is going coming. up to the mic. Thank you, Jim. Mayor, Council. Mike, could you repeat that? I'm not sure I caught that. Sure. And you know where they're going to take the sample? Ah, yes. Um, the, the area on Mississippi Drive, um, along where that uh, where there's where there's nothing. There's just a bluff. Some of those borings are there. And then some more of those borings are on the opposite riverside of Mississippi Drive along where the old collapsed uh, railroad tie retaining wall is. And then there is uh, just a couple more a little further to the south or downriver from there along in that stretch. We uh, utilize to the fullest extent possible existing previously done soil borings, but in that area there really wasn't a lot, and one of the things that's afoot, if you will, is um, we are thinking now that maybe we can eliminate the need for that retaining wall along there with, uh, with this project. But it is, um, before we decide to do that, some additional soil borings would really be the right thing to do there. So that's, uh, that is part of the need. The rest of it is to just cover the project a little better than what we had with the uh, existing soil borings that we had had used. Okay. Thank you, Jim, very much. And it sounded like you expected you might have to do more down the road. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, the whole idea was that uh, we would do this, and I think we have saved money. I know that's that funny thing again. You spend money, but you save it. I, we saved money, I think, here. It's my opinion that we saved money because we, we have bulldozed this forward and you're not just saying, okay, we're going to do soil borings on this whole entire thing and find out that maybe some of it you don't need. This is specifically targeted for a specific need. For what need? Um, slope stability analysis in that area where that retaining wall is and then slope stability analysis uh, close to where that just that bluff is. So these aren't for environmental reasons or anything like that? No, it's not for environmental reasons. It's, it's just strictly geotechnical and soils analysis they want to do. Now, if everything comes out good, you're proposing that we may be able to not have to put in a retaining wall. Yes. <clears throat> no guarantees here. Yeah. I assume part of that keeps in mind that the, the vibrations and everything that a train passing would Vibrations cause. of trains, uh, like traffic too, soil suppose. moisture, traffic above it, yes. Thank you, Jim. All right. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion is approved with all ayes. 11J. <clears throat> 
Presented for City Council's consideration is a request to approve the closure of Dick Drake Way for replacement of the existing railroad crossing approximately 900 feet southeast of Grandview Avenue. The crossing will remain closed from October 11th through the 13th of this year. The governing agreement is currently being reviewed to determine what, if anything, the city will be billed for this project. Staff is working with CP Rail to see what can be done to minimize the expense to the city. Is there a motion to approve the request as submitted? So moved, Your Honor. Thank you, Phil. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Your Honor. Yes. I'd request that the council table this to the meeting on October 20th, uh, which would allow the CP an opportunity to demonstrate that maintenance is actually required at the intersection um, and uh, that we uh, bring it back at that time. I agree. <laughs> table till the 20th. Does that require a motion? Yeah. Yes. yes please. Second. You just, just did, did it. That. Second. Second. You did a motion. Okay. Tom, you you made the first. Yes. Tom made the motion to table. Okay. Bill seconded. Any further? Well, no discussion. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. The uh, motion is tabled. 11K. Presented for City Council's consideration as a request to approve the contract for the HVAC maintenance at the Public Safety Building. The City has negotiated a contract <coughs> with Total Maintenance Incorporated. TMI to provide the necessary maintenance for the HVAC system for an annual sum of $8,988. Funds are available in the building and grounds budget to cover the expense of this contract. Is there a motion to approve the request as submitted? So moved. Is there a second? Second, Your Honor. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Request is approved with all ayes. 11L. Presented for City Council's consideration is a request to approve a CVB marketing proposal. Three proposals were received for the CVB's proposed marketing plan, with the CVB board recommending approval of McDaniel's marketing in the amount of $22,607 for a nine month campaign in digital marketing. Staff is in agreement with the board's recommendation. Is there a motion to approve the request as submitted? So moved. Is there a second? Second. second. Santos? Have we, have we seen this? Yes. Yes, it's It was included. emailed to us. It's included in the oh, packet. Yeah. Okay. Any other discussion? I just want to indicate that when I saw this proposal, I was very happy to see it, that uh, I think Muscatine can benefit by a, I'll use the word, professional uh, company to help promote Muscatine. Yes, sir, and absolutely highly recommend it from the Quad Cities uh, CVB as well. Yeah. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The request is approved with all ayes. 11M, presented for City Council's consideration, <coughs> is a request to approve contract modification number two for the CDBG Downtown Revitalization Stormwater Project. The contract for this project was awarded to Triple B in the amount of $69,558. Change order number one, previously approved by City Council, had amended the total contract amount to $33,682.50. This contract modification amends the contract price to $39,458.50. Grant funds for this project total $40,000. Is there a motion to approve the request as submitted? So moved, Your Honor. Second. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Do we anticipate any more change orders? Will we stay under the 40? <clears throat> I don't anticipate any more change orders, but we do have an additional purchase for the plants uh, that is fourteen thousand I'm sorry fourteen hundred fifty five dollars um, so we will go over the forty thousand dollars allotted for this but we will use other funds from the five hundred thousand dollar total to uh, account for that this is the bio soil right this is the yep the bio so cell it's, it's a small part of the, the five hundred thousand dollar CBGD grant so yeah that's why I'm, I'm because I just asked earlier, but I think on the stormwater, and then you're saying that this is this is part of the biocell. Yes. 
Okay, so this isn't actually getting into the storm water. It, it is. It's basically our water that we're running off the roofs of the buildings and whatnot are going into. We're diverting it to the bioswale instead of putting it in the sanitary sewer. Okay, which, okay. That's not going to the river. Yeah, no, the, you're, you're absolutely correct on it. So yeah, the, the cell is, infiltrates the water um, into the ground. If there's any, let's say we have a major uh, rain event, um, there are system, there's an overflow system within the cell that takes the excess water and does then put it into our stormwater system um, so that we don't have standing water in the cell that becomes a mosquito issue or anything like that in the future. Okay. Are you good, Santos? I do. Just a general question about these bio cells. Do they need to be cleaned out once in a while so that they don't plug up, so to speak? There, there is some maintenance that needs to be done with it, and we've worked with, uh, we've had discussions. We'll work with uh, the Pollution Prevention Control Center, John Cook. They're doing a ton of um, stormwater improvement projects down there, and John does a lot of training and education as well. So working with him, working with our Parks and Rec staff um, to make sure that the maintenance that is required um, is done properly. Um, we, we have a schedule of um, preventative maintenance and checkups that we do on the cell to make sure it's being maintained properly. Um, keeping on top of the preventative maintenance really um, hopefully keeps us from having uh, a large mm -hmm. issue down the road. Is this the first we've done in the city? This is the first that the city has done in the city. Um, there's been some private companies that have implemented these systems, but this is the first one that we've done as a, as a city entity. We'll also be able to tap the, the, the expertise of our new public works director who um, uh, was in charge of installation of a number of these in Davenport and is very familiar with the systems. So, Okay. Mike, did you apologize? Um, did okay. I interrupt? Thank you. Mike, did you have something to ask? Yes, yes, please. Adam, uh, if and when that overflows, where does it go? Yes, um, the overflow... Um, Actually, and I encourage you when, you when you get back, Mike, to go down the parking lot and you'll see, you'll actually see where we put the trench, but um, we have a six inch tile that takes the stormwater, I would say it's probably you know, 100 feet to towards Mississippi Drive and connects into a uh, stormwater inlet. <laughs> this is, this uh, tile is, is underground, correct? Correct. He just told you. When, sorry, repeat that question, Mike. When it overflows, where does it go? And that, that's what uh, Adam was referring to. If, it, if we get a large rain event, it'll, it'll flow into the, uh, to the duct and into the storm system. Mm -hmm. That's plan A. No, that's plan B. Plan A is, is that the storm water will, uh, well, not until next spring uh, when, the, when the curb cuts are, are made and after the plants have had a, a chance to establish, but the water will go in and, and uh, infiltrate into the, uh, in, into the, uh, uh, into the, uh, the ground, ground and, and the sub-base uh, slowly at that point in time. If you have that large rain event, it'll go into the storm system. The goal... Okay, the Probably. Mo yeah, their, their garage is down below the garage of the uh, alley level. Yeah, level four. <laughs> and it, uh, they, they've heard all about it's planning and planning planning. before. It's coming up. This, this is the new it's coming plan A and B. So uh, just be conscious of it, please. <laughs> Absolutely, Mike, and we've we've worked and we've had discussions with with those property owners, and and all in all, this project works to reduce the amount of stormwater going into our stormwater system. System, so it, it is an improvement um, to minimize the amount of stormwater or going into that system. And the water water from the alley will actually be directed to this, correct? Yes, yes, That's correct. Rather than towards the buildings, right? On. And another exactly. great, another great element of it. It also helps to filter and clean the water. And I think all of us have seen some of the stuff in the alley, so it'll be a, a great benefit for water uh, 
cleanliness as well. It's worth giving it a, a whirl. It's just, boy, a <clears throat> gullet washer, that, that will fill up real fast. Yeah. So, um, see how well it works. Yeah, uh, Thank you, sir. Mike, this is, this is Jim Edgemont. Um, your, your point is when all heck breaks loose and you get that storm that can't go anywhere, where does it go from there? Yeah. Okay. Um, basically, as I understand it, when you get that, the emergency overland flow route that would come out of this would be into the parking lot and down the parking lot and into that same inlet that's down there. And if that can't handle it, it goes into the street from there. So basically, it all flows away from that alley. Because we had one of those within the last 12 months. Yes. And we had one in the 12 months before that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you, Jim. Very okay. Good. Jim, one last question. So when, you, when they designed this, we went six-inch tile. But what is the main sewer header that we have for the storm? Is that like a 14-inch that goes to the, to the river? Underneath this bioswale? Yeah. The big one that runs. That one's from the inlet. Oh, yeah. the inlet. From the inlet to this. I have no idea <laughs> how big that storm sewer is down there. It's 100 years old. Uh, th this, is, this is what I know about storm sewer zone. No matter how big it is, there's always going to be the rainstorm that will flood it where it yep. can't take it all. So you always have to provide for that emergency overland flow route so that it can flow somewhere you want it to go <clears> instead <throat> of somewhere you Just a lot of surface don't want area for a six inch tile. But, but the six-inch tile is only just what's in the bottom of this bioswell. It, it, so on most things you capture it, you would capture it. It has a chance to sit in there. So it's like a little miniature detention basin. Mm -hmm. But yes, you'll, you'll have events that, that will flood that, overflow it, and it will go on down into the lower end of that parking lot. Great. Thank you. Okay. Great news. Thanks again, Jim. Thank you both. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. <coughs> aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Request is approved with all ayes. 11N, presented for City Council's consideration, is a request to approve contract modification number three for the CDBG downtown revitalization facade project. As with this type of project, contract modifications are expected as unknown issues present themselves. The total of this contract modification is $13,043. Remaining grant funds will be used to fund these additional work items. Is there a motion to fund these additional work items? So, so moved. Or second. <clears throat> Phil and then Alan. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The request is approved with all ayes. Moving on to 14 on the agenda, communication from council members. Councilman Fitzgerald, do you have anything tonight? I have nothing at this time, Your Honor. <coughs> Councilman Saucedo? Um, I had gotten, uh, spoke with some homeowners recently about the downtown facade. Um, I wanted to just comment about the great work that the uh, that your team's been doing, and uh, Adam and Jim. So I was very pleased to hear how happy they were as far as and Andrew, as far as what they were pleased with the work that we're doing, and I want to congratulate you guys for keeping up on top of that and keeping us up to, to speed on that. I also had a phone calls in regards to the challenges that we're still having on Mulberry. I'm hoping that we're, we're able to eventually get that road open soon, Jim. And I want to be able to get an update if possible so I can have some something that I can address to that. If there's some moment, I don't know if that's something possible we can ask on that. Because I think, one, I think there's also one. Uh, Did you say you wanted an update? Just Clips, a, a, brief, a brief, a brief, mm -hmm. yeah, just kind of a brief date. <clears throat> Mayor, Council, um, we paved the second half of what is paved out there now tomorrow morning, starting at 6.30. Phil will be there, I know. So anybody else that wants to come along and, and see it, uh, please, please come on out. I will be awake. Because um, <laughs> I can promise you we'll wake. If Phil's not awake, we will wake him up. Work in your driveway. Yeah. Um, yeah. Come on over. The plan that was just discussed, and I know there's an update that's coming out very, very soon uh, to you guys uh, on the project. But just in a nutshell, 
The plan right now is that tomorrow we will pay. Next Friday, we will get to the first half of that next piece because everything else is done. The sewers are done. All the stuff that needs to be done is done in that next section. And then the Friday after that, they will do the second half of that. And then there will be, I will guess, a week, another week or so of um, driveways. And we will get that open to traffic from there. We've got three yeah. or four weeks worth of, of, of uh, just a very brief update on, on what they're going to be working on that Randy's provided uh, that you'll yeah. have tomorrow in, oh, your, in your inbox. Potentially mid-November, the road could be open. Before Thanksgiving? But, but, uh, for sure, before Thanksgiving, potentially earlier than that. Now, they're not now gonna, it's they're all, not going to, oh, we're not opening that before the sidewalks are in, are we? Um, Where we got cement trucks and you know, contractors doing. I just said street. I was now. just asking about the streets is that's, all they were asking me. That's and what I'm said. afraid of, though. If we get a decent break in the weather, <laughs> sidewalks will come along for that. But can I guarantee you that we'll be able to get all the sidewalks done? I can't. I mean, certainly that is the goal. Get the street, get the sidewalks, get the driveways. Get everything graded off so there's no big huge holes or anything around there. Get the detention basin done, graded. Um, but that's, that's the goal. So yeah, the sidewalks was, may end up being next year. Maybe. Okay. But I certainly ways. wouldn't think all of them, but some of them okay. might be. That's a good point. Maybe what we should do is focus on trying to get them all done on one side so there's at least a route all the way through it. Well, we'll talk I, with the contractor about that yeah. to see if that's doable. You'll, you can manage that. I just okay. want to be able to get an update to let. And then you're selling people right now where we're at. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again, Jim. Anything else, Santos? No. Thank you. Councilman Harvey, do you have anything tonight? Uh, I guess I'll just remind the public that this Saturday is the last second Saturday, so I invite everybody to come down on Saturday and enjoy the festivities on 2nd Street. For? Pardon? For what? Second, second Saturday. Second, second Saturday. Saturday. Been going on all summer. Yeah. So. <laughs> oh, so it's called Second Saturday. It's called Second Saturday. <laughs> it's the last one. Fun and games, and I guess they're going to have a. I'm guessing you have it's like a street. Kind of, kind of a street fest, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I thought it was the farmer's market. I don't know. No. You have a special email coming your way tomorrow. <laughs> you will now. Oh, man. I don't get. All right. I, no comment there. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have anything else tonight, Councilman Harvey? No, thank you. Councilman Honor. Spread? I have nothing this evening, Your Honor. Councilman Ray Walt? Nothing tonight, thank you. Staff? Nothing tonight, Your Honor. Thank you. I just had a couple quick things. Um, the next copy with the mayor is October 29th at Riverside Cafe in Ward 3, Councilman Spread's Ward. And I'm working on a food pantry drive. The food pantry is really struggling right now. They're seeing 130 to 140 people a day in need of food, and they're asking for people to come and do some donations of food. They're open. They're in the old post office, and they're open Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8 to 10:30. And besides food, they're also in need of sacks, like plastic grocery sacks or paper sacks. So, if anybody can help, they would really appreciate it. Your Honor, would that be? Uh, on the first floor or kind of the lower level of the post it's office? It's actually in the back of the building. Okay. Of the old post office where so that little park parking, that parking lot, lot is. Lot? Okay. Yes, they right. go in one door and, and out the other. I assume they take dry goods and canned goods? Absolutely. No, nothing they, fresh. They actually even have freezers and refrigerators. Really? Okay. So <clears throat> farmers and hunters have donated deer and they're happy to take any kind of donations help feed people in our community and that's all I have for tonight do I have a motion to adjourn so moved have a good evening we're adjourned bye Mike bye -bye. <laughs>